Doing a two-way ANOVA in jump is a little more complicated than doing a one-way ANOVA. I'm going to run how quickly how to do this. So first you need to select your data just as before and get it into jump. In this case I'm going to right click and copy and then in jump just as I've done in multiple operations before I'm going to go to edit paste with column names. Now, uh, in Windows, this might appear in a jump header here rather than in in Max. It's going to appear in the uh, menu bar at the top of the screen. <clears throat> Once I've pasted this in, I'm ready to start analyzing it. I'm going to select Analyze. This should be in the menu header at the top of your screen in a Windows uh, interface. You may have worked with distribution already, where you found means and um, standard error, standard deviation. You may have worked with fit y by x, and in fit y by x you did simple linear regression, simple ANOVAs. Fit model is the more complex option, and this is what happens when we're building a more complicated model in Jump. In fit model, I'm going to start with stem growth. I've got three variables here that I want to look at all of these are y-axis variables. These are responses, and this comes from a data set along uh, Mount Rose, which is a mountain in the Southern Olympic Mountains in Washington State. There was a fire in 2006 on this mountain, and it burned one side of one side of the hill and not the other, going all the way up the mountain. So what that allows us to do is look at two factors that might affect, in this case, um, things that we measured on salal plants. So stem growth of salal plants, we measured pathogens on salal plants, and we looked at number of spiders. This comes from Field Ecology Project. And in all cases, we want to look at the interaction effects of both elevation and condition and how they interact with uh, each Y variable that we're interested in. And it's important to know that the effect of condition, say presence in a burn or unburn, will that could be different uh, depending on the elevation you're at. So you could have one effect at low elevation and a different effect at higher elevation. So that's where an interaction is going to occur. In order to add these effects, I can select them both. So I've just highlighted them both. And then if I want to make sure that I do a full factorial, that is everything in the model and across, I can, in the macros there, I just selected full factorial. I could also just add these one at a time. Now I'll go through and delete them just by using add. And when I'm ready to cross, I select one, select the other, and cross. Regardless, I'm ready to run my model. When I run my model, it comes out like this. As is typical of jump, it might give you more information than you're interested in, at least initially. Um, it's going to give you the whole model, the results for individual factors, elevation, condition, and elevation times condition. So let's shrink those for now because what we should be focusing on now uh, are just a few things that we've already learned about in ANOVA. The residuals are interesting, but we don't need them right now. The effect summary is interesting, but we don't need it right now. What we're really looking for are uh, three things here. Here's our summary of fit, which gives us our R squared. Here's a general analysis of variance table for our whole model. And then here's the expanded effects test for analysis of variance for individual components of our model, elevation condition and elevation by condition. In this case, you can see that the interaction between elevation and condition is not significant, whereas each of these factors is significant. If I graph this in Graph Builder, I can get a more compelling graph for what this should look like. I'm gonna select stem growth as my y-axis. I'm gonna select elevation as my x-axis. And then I'm gonna select condition as an overlay. In this graph, you can see that high and low elevation are different. Burned and unburned are different. So the red and the blue uh, in this case, I don't like that it used blue for burned and red for unburned. Um, of course, I could change that color if I want a different color. 
But regardless, you can see that as we go from low to high elevation, stem growth goes down in both cases. And additionally, in the burn, we have less stem growth than we do outside of the burn. If I want to change this, I can just double click on the legend there. And then I can select different colors for the things that I want uh, colored differently. Let's try that. Ah, that's better. That communicates that the burn happened and turned everything red, Christmas colors. When I'm done with the graph, I hit done, and this uh, shows more clearly the results of my analysis. Mm -hmm.